One of the most fundamental tools that you will use as a developer is actually Git. And you've probably used Git in the terminal, right? So very common git status, git add, make a commit and then push it to a remote. And then if you wanna see the history of what you did, you would do something like git log and you get a history of the commits here. So we use git to track changes over time and also to collaborate with other people so we're not accidentally overriding somebody else's work. We can also create a so-called branch so we're not working directly on the main line but on a saver sideline first and then later merge it back into the main line. If we make a mistake we can refer it to one of these earlier commits. So we want to use git unfortunately out of the box as you can see here this is not the best git experience that we can get. Now if you're using an IDE they typically have some very basic functionalities for git out of the box these days however this is still very limited it's hard to visualize the different branches that we have it's also tricky to get the full commit history see the exact changes that were made for each commit you also have to remember a bunch of git commands and especially the more advanced ones can become quite tricky so i actually want to introduce you to today's sponsor which is git kraken i think they actually have a wonderful tool here and actually i should say a suite of tools to help you work with git so this is their desktop app or their git client so i'll explain how this works and why you would want to use it but this is not the only product they have they actually also have something called the git lens which works inside your code editor they also have a terminal app actually which i will show you as well so git kraken works wherever you are already working so you don't have to switch tools if you don't want to but this desktop app i have to say is pretty slick so let me show you why so here I have opened a repo I'm working on. It's a simple to-do app. And it gives me a really nice visualization here of the commit history. So the most recent commit was this one. You can see there were some commits before that, some of them on other branches. Right, so you can see that these branches, they're originating from the main line here, but we wanna do some development on some other branch and then later merge it back in. So a git history is essentially just a sequence of commits and I can see what happened in each commit. So you can see this entire horizontal bar is one commit and when I click on there, I can see what happened. So for example, this one, this is the title of the commit, who made the commit, so some other person, and also the code that was changed. So one file here was changed. If I click on it, I can even see. So you can see in that commit, that person actually removed something on this line so this was changed there. I can also view it a bit differently like this. I can also see the names of these different branches. So you, so you can see these are actually branches. I'm currently checked out on the main branch. And I can see because of these icons here, I can see this laptop sign basically means I have this branch locally. But here I have my GitHub account icon. So it's also on the GitHub repo. So this is actually the GitHub repo. Now, if there are changes to this repo, we also need to be updated here locally, right? So we can pull, but in this case, you can see we already are up to date here locally. I can also push to that remote repo. And actually I can also create a branch here. But before we do that, we need a reason to create a branch, right? Typically to work on some new feature or to fix a bug. We don't wanna do it directly on the main line. We wanna do it on the side, essentially on a branch. And then if everything goes all right, we wanna merge it back into the main Git Kraken actually has a so-called launch pad. This is actually a really nice overview of basically all your pull requests that you need to review. So there were some pull requests and somebody assigned me to that. So I get a nice overview here. Also, I get a bunch of issues that were assigned to me. So here you can see actually for this uh, to-do app. And again, you can also see that here in the issues tab here on GitHub. This is automatically synchronized here with Git Kraken. So it shows me that there were some issues assigned to me and there are other things as well. If I make local changes in some repos that will be work in progress, I can see everything. I can also snooze certain items, but most of your work will come from these issues and the pull requests that you have to review. So this launchpad is actually a really nice way to start your day, I think, but just to continuously use this as sort of a command center where you have a nice overview of everything that you need to do. You can also organize this even better, by the way. So if you think oh, adding dark mode is not really urgent, we, we, that can wait until tomorrow. So I, I'm gonna snooze this. So now it's actually under snoozed. If I do think, oh, actually I wanna work on this today, I can move it back. I can actually even pin it if I actually wanna prioritize it. So you can imagine if you have dozens of issues or many pull requests, it's even easier to organize. So here we actually see that there was an issue assigned to us about a bug. So let's actually view the rep repo. 
And actually that's what we were just looking at. So you can quickly check that out. But actually what I wanna show you is that we can create a branch to start fixing the bug right now. So I can create a branch here with Git Kraken and I can just create a branch here in this panel. Let's actually create one. Um, I will actually just use this standard name that we get. We will base this branch on the main branch. Okay, so let's create that one. All right, so it will actually create a branch and then also immediately check out to that branch. So now actually when I hover, you can see that we have this new branch that is also pointing to this commit. So I'm currently on the on this bug fixing branch that was created for me. If I open up the project in my IDE, you can see it also automatically switches to that branch. If I do wanna switch branches, maybe I actually wanna go to this center app branch, I can double click and it automatically checks it out for me. So now I'm on this center app branch. If I look at my code editor, it also has automatically switched there, right? So it's actually just the same repo, of course. You don't have to worry about your project sort of becoming out of sync with what you're doing here. It's just one repo essentially. So if I now check out to this bug fixing branch, it will also be updated here again. So now I can go in here and so, yeah, so it's about an adding to do doesn't work anymore. So let's actually see what we can do here. So here we are adding a to do and I'm using Git lens here, by the way, we'll talk more about that in a second, but it has this inline blame feature. So you can see that here where we have an important line of code that has to do with adding a to do. Yeah, there seems to be something missing because we're just reusing the existing to do's. We're forgetting about the new to do. So we do need to add to do here. So if you want to know who made that mistake, who to blame, you can see we can use GitLens for that. It has a really slick inline blame fe feature. So you can see it was some other user that made a commit and it has all of this information. They actually, for some reason, removed the to do. So we only have the existing to do. So we can fix that and I will save here. Cool. So now I made some changes. So now automatically here in Git Kraken, it will show that as a work in progress. So here you can see I haven't committed yet, right? So now uh, I can view the changes I made, right? So fixing the bug, I can stage these changes, adding to do, and I will commit here. Cool. So now I made a commit. So you can see we have a new commit here, but it's still on a different branch. Now this has been created locally for us. So we haven't pushed this to the remote yet. So let's actually push this. It will ask me which remote or branch it should be pushed to. So we will leave the default here. We actually wanna merge it into main. So what I can do is I can click and drag this onto other branches, actually really slick. In this case, we wanna drop it on this main branch. Let's actually uh, drop it there. And you can see it will actually give me all the possible options. Imagine you had to do this yourself with Git commands in a terminal, uh, unless you're really, really sophisticated with Git to have such a good idea of what all the possible options are. But what we, so we could merge it here locally, but we can also create a pull request actually. Let's actually create a pull request now to uh, merge it into main. You can see it opens up a panel here so I can create a pull request right here. In this case, we're fix adding a to-do, yes. And we will say it fixes the issue. I can assign reviewer, so very similar to doing it in the GitHub UI, but I can stay inside Git Kraken here and I will actually create that pull request right here. Cool, now it's created this. So now I actually can go to GitHub and we can see there has been one and I will actually just merge it right here. So we will confirm the merge right here in GitHub. You can also see there's a pull request because it shows this, uh, this icon here. So now this has been merged into the main. When we go back, we can see that this branch has been uh, merged into main. This commit now uh, is being visualized like this and then and we can actually check out to that main and it will actually automatically update here. So now you can see local and origin are the same again. Of course, I can also pull, but this shows how we can go from issue to pull request to eventually merging into main. I would say in a much better way than if we had to do a bunch of commands here uh, in the terminal, right? And of course, this was a basic example, but imagine you wanna undo things, right? So I could also, also undo something. As soon as I wanna get a little bit more sophisticated with Git, that would be extremely difficult here and would be a much more pleasant experience here in this Git Kraken UI. So now we can go to the launch pad and let's actually refresh. Yeah, you can see that issue now has been closed because I referred to it in the pull request. So in GitHub will automatically close it. And then here we can sync with the issues on GitHub. You can also click on the terminal here, by the way, but here you can write commands 
to get, for example, well, let's actually check it out. I can write GK and it will show me the commands that I can use here. So as an example, I can get all the pull requests. So let's actually run GK PR and just list them. So it's going to find the pull requests in that workspace. And you can see here, I have one that I should be looking at. So many of the things that we are visually interacting with here, you can also do it with commands in the terminal in case you prefer that. So now we can work on the next thing we want to work on maybe review a pull request right so here we have a to-do app that's the repo we're working on we have a we can review a pull request if we want we can actually do it right here uh, and actually they just changed the readme so they removed a bunch of things and they just added this is a to-do app suggest some changes as well but what i want to show you here as well is that i also have a pull request here from a different repo. And if we go to issues here, actually, you can see I have another issue assigned to me from another repo as well. So this is because here in Git Kraken, I have a so-called workspace. So basically when you open up Git Kraken and you don't have anything open, you will see a welcome screen like this. And you can open up one particular repo, but it's pretty common that you work on multiple repos. And so you're gonna be assigned a bunch of different issues, pull requests from different repos. And so it's really nice that we can set up one workspace and group together a lot of those repos into that one workspace. So I can create a workspace here, and then here I'm connecting with GitHub, but you can see you have these other options as well. Maybe you're hosting your repo somewhere else as well. And then you can pick the repos that you wanna add as part of that workspace, right? That's all I did here. So then here in Launchpad, you get all of that data, all of that information, all of your work essentially in one centralized view. So I can actually also open up that repo. If I view that repo, you can see this is a different one, of course. This one has just been created. So that's really nice. Now let's say we wanna continue with this one. So now we have a feature request. Somebody wants us to add dark mode to the app. So let's create a branch for that. We will create a branch for that right here. All right, I will just uh, leave it like that and we will paste that on main again. Cool, so now we are automatically checked out to that new branch as well. And right, so now to actually edit the code, it's possible to do it in Git Kraken here as well. I could, I could actually go to the files and uh, edit the files if I want. If you just wanna make some small changes, I think that's uh, very doable. But typically we do wanna stay inside our IDE for serious coding. So to open up Visual Studio Code, I can actually use the command palette here as well. I can also hold command P. And here I have a bunch of different commands that I can use. So actually really nice to have a quick way to do a bunch of things. So one of the things I can do is actually open an external editor. It doesn't have to be Visual Studio Code. You can set up other editors as well. And so if you set it up, it will open up your IDE. So really amazing Git GUI. In case you want to try it out, make sure to use the link in the description. So now I would go to my IDE again. So now we would actually add dark mode to this app. Now we live in the age of AI programming. So I'm going to hand off that work to Claude here. Add dark mode to the app, please. All right, so then here I get a bunch of changes I will actually just accept and let's assume that it one shot of this and everything went all right. Just close this. So now we made a bunch of changes. Before I commit here, let me show you Git Lens as well. So Git Lens is an extension here and it will give you a lot of those features that we just saw here inside your IDE as well. So if you really want to stay inside your IDE, uh, Git Lens is actually a wonderful option also to use it in combination. It will show me right here what I'm working on. So I'm working on this branch here. I made some changes that I can commit if I want and it will actually help me generate a commit message. It will also show me that I'm working on that issue that feature request. I can publish that branch to the remote from here as well. Let's actually do that. So. I can actually confirm it, sure. And it will actually ask me to do a pull request as well. But right now we don't need that yet. Let's actually try committing the changes first. So it will actually use AI if we want. We don't have to do that if we don't want, but I can commit with Git Lens here. And actually, if I want, I can also change the model that they use. But here I get a nice commit message here from Git Lens. We'll automatically switch to this source control tab here in Visual Studio Code. This is like the default uh, Git feature that you get out of the box. So we, we will still use that. I do wanna stage the changes and then we will commit. All right, so then I can sync the changes. And now when I go back here to Git Lens, you can see this is all up to date. I can actually create a pull request from here if I want to merge it into main. So if I click on that, I will go to this exact PR request page. Let's actually quickly do that. And I will merge this. Let's confirm the merge. All right, so I confirmed the merge on GitHub. Now, I, if I want, I can fetch this. And now it's all up to date here as well. So now everything is up to date. And if we want to see the commit history, we can actually also view it here. So they will actually add an icon here to see the history of all the commits. So you can see we are on this branch. If I double click on it, it will ask me to switch to that branch. So very similar. And actually we need to pull to get all of the commits in here locally. 
All right, so now you can see we are up to date here. All right, so we get that same beautiful commit graph inside the IDE as well. Can do many of the same things, right? Create a branch. And actually we can go to the launch pad here as well. So it will actually show you that here. So here we can see there are some PRs that we need to, that we need to take a look at, but it will show you that here in the sidebar as well. So you can see there are two pull requests here in my launch pad here. And actually it will show you what you were working on before as well. So you get some history here. We can also start work on issues that are assigned to us, create a branch for those. Um, here we can see the pull requests that we need to review. So if I click here, it will actually open up GitHub and I could review that if I want. So we get this inline blame feature as well with GitLand's detailed information on, well, every line essentially, which commit it was part of. And we can even go here to file annotations to get even more detailed information. So actually, yeah, so here you can see uh, these three were actually added. And actually I can go back in time uh, to the previous revision actually. So you can see in the previous commit, these three lines were added. And there was nothing else before that. And actually, if I want, I can keep going and see what the changes before that were, etc. GitLens actually gives me an inspect feature here as well. So if I click on this line, you it will show you the commit of which it was part of. So you can see if I start going to this flex style, you can see that was part of a different commit. It will show you the files that were changed in that commit. So we can see some uh, divs here. I can also ask AI to explain the changes. Very useful for onboarding and you're new to a big code base. So we get implement centered layout. Indeed, this is just centering something essentially. That's a nice explanation here, okay. Now we get line history, so you get line by line uh, history here. Also history about the entire file itself. So you can see it was also part of some other commit where it was just adding the body style in the first place. You also get a visual history of the changes in the file. So uh, you can see that there was a change here with a large magnitude here in the beginning. So it will give you a feel for when the file drastically changed. And then we can also do a search and compare. So Git Kraken is not just one GUI, although I really like their graphical user interface. I think it's great. So the desktop app I think is wonderful, but if you do want to stay inside your terminal, for example, or maybe in addition to that, that's an option here as well. And we saw Git Lens as well, but you can see Git Kraken is essentially everywhere where you are already working. So this is Git Kraken's DevX platform. It's not just a GUI. So actually I had a great time working with Git Kraken. I think uh, it's really a wonderful experience with Git now. So in case you wanna try out the Git Kraken developer experience platform, make sure to use my link in the description to get a good deal. Git Kraken, as of recording the video, does offer a free trial. So if you just wanna try it out, um, you can find the link in the description. For sponsoring the video and I hope that you liked it. Hopefully you can see value in it as well. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you the next one.